Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this week's service. We're going to start off by reading a scripture from the Book of Mormon. This is Ether 28a in the REV, 1227a in the OPV. I give unto men and women weakness, that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men and women that humble themselves before me. As far as prayer requests this week, we have people that are sick. Uh, one woman has COVID and there's now two pandemics, two diseases that are hurting us, monkeypox and COVID. So please pray for the health of the saints. We also have some people that have started new jobs and one brother in particular is looking for a job. Please pray for those that are seeking employment or seeking new employment. We still have the problem of businesses are making record-breaking prices and they're blaming inflation on how they're doing it, charging too much and paying their people too little. So while the cost of living has gone up, wages are stagnant and saints need to find jobs, employers that are willing to pay a thriving wage, a, not just a poverty wage so that we can take care of our families. Also, I've had a number of people that were asking for prayer requests for peace of mind. Just with everything going on, it's getting more difficult for them to stay positive. So if you could please pray for them that they will feel the guidance of the Holy Spirit in their life, and their lives, that they will find comfort in the Lord I love the, it's one of my absolute favorite prayers in all the scriptures, the prayer from Alma when he says, comfort my soul in Christ. So I ask that you please pray that the souls of the saints will be comforted in Christ. If you'd like to pause now, pause the video for an opening hymn and an opening prayer, please do so now. And now for the unification portion of the service. This is the time when we as saints read the Shema together. The Shema is Deuteronomy 6.4. I'm going to read it in Hebrew first, and then I'm going to read it in English. And then I'm going to pause to allow time for you to read it out loud so that wherever or whenever you are, you can read the Shema so that we can all be one in Christ. Shema Yisrael, Yavah, Elohenu, Yeva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yeva is our Elohim. Yeva is you. I've been praying this week on what the message should be for this service, and I found it last night. When I read this scripture from the book of Ether, I really felt strongly that this was the message that the Lord wanted me to share with you this week. And that is that God gives us weaknesses to humble us and that God gives us the grace of Jesus Christ and that with that grace, we can do all things. I used to think that the Latter-day Saint movement was unique because we weren't in that war between Catholics and Protestants of, is it works or is it grace? But as I grew older and I listened to the church I belonged to at the time, and now being even older and listening to all the different voices within the Latter-day Saint movement, I realized that we're just a microcosm of that war there is still the war between works and grace. And I find this war to be utterly ridiculous because there is no battle between works and grace. It's like this idea that, yeah, you can get salvation, but if you work really hard, you can earn exaltation. That, that doesn't make any sense. Salvation and exaltation are the same thing. You can't have exaltation without salvation, and you can't have salvation without exaltation. 
it's it's a moot point. Yes, everyone will be resurrected, but that's not salvation. Salvation is returning back to the God that created us. Those that are resurrected into perdition, they do not get to be with God. And so therefore, they may be resurrected, but they're not saved. It's the same thing with works and grace. So let's say that you do a work. Let's say that you you cook a meal. Well, you're told, go and make a steak. The problem, though, is that you don't have anything in your refrigerator. There is no steak. So, you can turn on your stove. You can put a rock in there, I guess. I don't know. You can season it. Do whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And let's say you do have the steak. So you make the steak and you let it sit on a plate and you let it sit there and nobody eats it. And eventually you just have to throw it away. What was the point? Works and grace are a cause and effect. And the mistake is that some people think, all I need is the grace. I don't need any works. As long as I have the grace, Jesus has done all the works for me. And in one sense, it's true, but really that's just, hey, I've started the stove, but I'm not going to put any meat on it. I'm just going to burn up the pan or put a rock on there. Because when you love someone, love is an action verb. So when you accepted Jesus Christ, you do so, you have a love of God. Paul says that we love God because God loved us first. What does that mean? Well, he's suffering a ceremony. He died on the cross. He was resurrected on the third day. The atonement is an action that he took because he loved us first. We see this love and we say, wow, God came down here, lived the life as a man, showed us how to live the law. He loved us so much, he died for us. And then he came back to life so that we could come back to life. He could have abandoned us, but he didn't. I love that. I love him for that. So, as Paul said, he loved us first. We didn't know him yet. Not in this reality. Not in this life. So he performed a work. He performed an action. What is our action? Well, the grace is everything he did for us. And the first work that we do is accept that work. Because if we don't accept it, then it was done in vain. It's just a stove that was started and didn't put any meat on it. But let's flip this around. There's an idea that if you just go out and do the works, then you'll earn that salvation. What works? What are we supposed to do? Well, if you belong to a prosperity church, it's pay tithing, right? How many times have you heard the idea of you pay your tithing and you'll be safe from hell? You give offerings, you give money to this church and you'll be saved from hell. But what good is any work? But let's start with that one. What good is that work if there's no intent in your heart? You can't buy your way into heaven. Baptism. How many children in our movement are forced to be baptized at the age of eight simply because it says to do so in a revelation we received from Joseph Smith? Flip it. They're not allowed to be baptized until they are old enough. And the youngest that you may potentially be old enough is eight years old. But I say, it doesn't matter if you're eight. Why are you going to get baptized if you don't have the first beginnings of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? If you don't have faith, if you haven't accepted that atonement, if you can do that when you're eight, that's wonderful. 
The Holy Spirit moves you to baptism, get baptized. But without the grace, you're throwing the meat into a pan with no fire. Or you're cooking the steak as an action, but you're never going to eat it. You have to have works and grace. I love the way C.S. Lewis puts it. He describes it as a pair of scissors. Sure, you can rip a piece of paper with one blade of the scissors, or you can rip the, the paper with the other blade of the scissors. But if you want to cut correctly, you grab it by the handles and you snip, snip, snip. That's the way grace and works function. You can't do the works without the grace. And the works without the grace are dead. James talks about this. I'll show you my faith by my works. But Jacob also talks about this in the Book of Mormon. We can do nothing without the grace of God, without the grace of Jesus Christ, the grace that moves us to proper action. What is the first principle of the gospel? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is an action. That is an act of love. He loved us first. And so because of that, we have faith in him. In Kabbalah, by the way, faith is defined differently the way Paul says it. Paul says that faith is believe in something that is unseen but is true. In Kabbalah, faith is a sure knowledge of a true reality. In Mormon Kabbalah, faith is something deep within us, a part of who we are eternally connecting us to God. I have faith in Jesus Christ because I know that he lives. I have felt the Holy Spirit. I've seen him. I've seen his works in action. Now you don't have to touch the wounds. What did Jesus say? It's greater to have faith in the resurrection without touching the wounds. But I will testify to you that once your faith is great enough, you will have that opportunity. And I also feel impressed by the Spirit to tell you, one of the spiritual gifts that we are given is to have faith in the faith of others or because of the faith of others. So if you aren't there yet, if you haven't felt that personal connection to God yet, then I implore you, I implore you to ask God, to ask the Holy Spirit to piggyback off of my faith. Have faith on my words and other Christians that you know. As you pull yourself towards Christ so you can begin that relationship yourself. And to be clear, when I say, as you pull yourself, you can only pull yourself through the grace of God. So at first, it may feel like you're doing this on your own. But when you look back later, you'll see that you were never alone. God was there with you the whole time. Because works and grace go together, hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. So those that have this gift, as they're drawing forward on the faith of those that came before them, they just don't realize yet that they're being moved by the grace, that they have the broken heart and that connection. They may realize they have the broken heart and the contrite spirit. They may just not feel the connection yet. And that's okay. We're all in different places. And those different places aren't a hierarchy. They aren't a level. They're just different places. But we're all on the same path. We're all on the same road. We're all in this together. What unites us is the Holy Spirit. What unites us is Jesus Christ. That's why this is the church of Jesus Christ. Because you and I together 
We are the church. It's not some organization. It's not a website. It's not a building. It's you and me. And together, we can fellowship one with another in Jesus Christ. A lot of my videos are based on the idea, a lot of my messages, a lot of my thoughts, on this idea that you aren't alone. I challenge you to share that message. I challenge you to make your own video telling people you're not alone. I challenge you to share this video telling people that they're not alone. Two things happen when we talk of Christ. The first is our relationship with God grows because we only speak of Christ as moved by the Spirit. You have someone that's talking positively about God even if they're just sharing their, you know, I think Jesus was a good person. They're being moved by the Holy Spirit, regardless of where they are on their path. And the second thing that happens is that the more you speak of Christ, the more your faith grows. The more your faith expands. Because you're deepening that, that connection. And as you do so, the light of Christ is shining forth like a beacon to others. Because you're moved by the grace and you're doing the works. You're cooking the food in the pan and then you're setting the table and you're enjoying the meal. And I want to testify to you that that meal is always more delicious when you're sharing it with your family and your friends. I have met very few people that enjoy going to a restaurant alone to dine. I have met very few people that enjoy sitting at home alone to eat. If we're social, when we're eating our physical meals, shouldn't we be social with our spiritual meals? I have people all the time, I had just a person just this week ask me, do you guys have a Bible study? Do you guys have a Book of Mormon study? Do you guys have some sort of group study? Every Thursday, 8.30, we don't have anything official going on, but I'm here. And anybody that wants to talk, anybody that wants to fellowship, 8.30 p.m. If we want more activities, we used to have stuff all the time. If we want more, we just have to put it together. We just have to build it. Because this is a Christian fellowship. And if we want to grow together, in the grace of Jesus Christ, we have to do the works that the Lord has called us to do, or they won't happen. So what's my message for you today? I talk to so many people who tell me, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. And I want you to know that you're right. You're not, and neither am I. Admitting that is the first step, and there's nothing wrong with it. The catch is that the weakness was given to us so that we will be humble. So as you're called by the Spirit, as you're moved by the Spirit to, to do a work for the Lord, remember your weaknesses and do it in humility. And remember, you're not doing that work alone. You're only able to do that work through the grace of Jesus Christ. 
The grace of Jesus is sufficient for all men and women that humble themselves before him. That's what the scripture says. Yes, there are people who go out boasting and do amazing things. But imagine how much more amazing those things would be if they humbled themselves and accepted the grace of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is they're doing, it would be infinitely better. So once again, brothers and sisters, I say to you, come home. We love you. We need you. We're here for you. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Be moved by the grace of Jesus Christ to do the works the Lord has called you to do. Even if that work is nothing more than just showing up. Because you being there helps someone else be there. Don't read the scriptures trying to figure out some list of things to do. Make your relationship with God personal. So that your works are nothing more than a statement of yourself. As a servant of the Lord. As a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's my message, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to partake of the sacrament of communion together. We're going to listen to a pre-recorded statement on communion, and then Christine is going to read both sacrament prayers back to back. And after that, there'll be a moment to pause the video so you can partake of the sacrament, sing a hymn, or meditate. And we will proceed from there. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope that you felt the spirit in this service. I know that I felt the spirit while I was putting it together and that's really how we communicate as saints. We can talk, but speaking spirit to spirit is really the best form of communication because that moves past our words. And sometimes we can speak spirit to spirit without any words. If this video has moved you, then I would ask that you please like it and share it so that other people can find it 
and hopefully it can help them feel closer to Jesus Christ as well. At this time, we're going to say our closing prayer. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time. Humbly, in meekness, seeking your guidance in all things, asking that your light be with us, the light of Christ will shine forth from us, that the atonement of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ can heal this broken world. Help us to see the positives in this creation. Help us to see the blessings. Help us to see your love. Help us to feel connected to you and to one another to a greater capacity. Help us to look not for the things that divide us, but for the things that unite us in Jesus Christ. Bless us as we move forward in faith, that we will in humility feel thy grace, feel thy presence, so that we can move forward in faith and do the works that you've called us to do. Help us to understand that all of our actions that are pleasing unto thee are not done by our own strength, but by the power and the strength of the grace that is given to us through Jesus Christ. We thank you humbly for our Savior. We thank you humbly for Jesus and the works that he did for us so that we can come back so that we can come back home through the atonement we thank you for Teshua that there is a way back and we thank you for the personal relationships that you've given us with you Lord and also with one another The greatest battle on this planet, the greatest sin, if you will, seems to be loneliness. Because as Satan separates us, it becomes harder and harder for us to do thy works and hear thy voice and know thy will. So we ask you, please, Bless the saints and those that would be saints. That they will know that they are not alone. That we will seek one another. They will, that we will seek unity in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will be and truly be the church of Jesus Christ. Not of any man-made organization. But that we ourselves will be the church and that we will go forth and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not merely by our words, but by our action. That we will influence people as the light of Christ shines forth from us to change the world, to heal the creation. Help us to grow stronger in the gospel in our families, in our homes, in our extended families, and our friends, and our acquaintances. Help us to find those that are seeking you, that we'll be moved by your grace to do the works needed, and help them be moved by grace to do the works needed, to grab hold of the iron rod, to move forward to the tree of life. Again, we thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for this technology. And we ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That all things will be balanced and all things will be won in you through the grace and atonement of Jesus Christ. These things we pray, these things we ask, in the name of Jesus Christ, so mote it be. Amen.